Thank you, Mario. I'd like to thank Mario for the invitation to give us a good idea. It is a wonderful place. I'm living in this area of Portugal. Right now I'm in the University of Lisbon since December last year. So yeah, I have a lot of time to travel it's a, it's a pleasure to be. Okay, well so uh, I'm gonna talk about one one work that we will release in archive some months ago. It's about how we can we can move dark energy in a, in a phenomenological way and how we can test the data. And in particular, what I'm gonna do is to well just a brief introduction that probably all of you know just some motivation of why we study dark energy or better say why we are trying to Model a, a fluid with a negative pressure. Uh, then I, I'm gonna just review uh, some parametrizations of the equation of the state of dark energy, a way to explore how uh, dark energy behaves instead of uh, studying a particular under, uh, under value theory. A, a way, and let's say a simple way, is to parametrize the equation of the state and then compare with the Data. So that at least, perhaps we don't know the, the fundamental theory, but at least we know what the behavior means. And then I'm going to move to one of these uh, phenomenological ways of modeling the, the late time acceleration, that is the so called cosmography, that is just uh, an expansion technical method of this one. And using an auxiliary variable, the recipe set or y. Later, you can compare with the, with the data. We are going to see that this has some shortcomings. In particular, we will see that the, the recipe Y is not work very well. And, and then we are going to try to if we are going to try to test and see that can we use cosmography to test a particular model. Uh, well, you can see the answer. Uh, and also, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna talk about how we can reconstruct cosmography, uh, so dark energy models, to the underlying theory, the underlying action, the actual action, with the in the sense models or, or modified gravities or whatever, departing from cosmography. We would see that this is this is uh, very problematic. Actually, it's not very useful. And then, if I have time, I, uh, I will just briefly talk about something that has nothing to be with it, but I think it may complete a one hour time segment. That is related with, uh, with, uh, with a paper that we are going to release on a, on this week. I think it's interesting. And uh, it's about how variable are variable modified gravities, as you probably know. So are familiar with modified gravity some years ago, people were proposing some modifications of the earth that uh, well, people started calling them uh, viable because they want to pass local system, uh, local system tests and so on. Uh, and we would see if uh, the problem that they uh, have themselves uh, are, can be solved. That they are actually on the But well, this part only if, if there is none. Uh, so, let's start with, as I said before, let's start with a brief review of what is what we have in, in our hands. Basically, we, we think that our universe is, is, is well, well described by Prima de Merrocks and all the metrics. That at large scale, the universe is homogeneous and isotropic. And, and assuming this, this principle, the cosmological principle, what 
we have is that the, the metric that describes this is the three million errors for the metric. Then we can introduce this metric in the general relative equations. You get the Freeman uh, equations that you know, are going to describe you how the, the universe, the expansion of the universe, uh, the volumes. So, uh, depending on how your matter content is, you are going to have a kind of expansion or another kind. And, and that's the problem. Because, well, just modeling and uh, matter content as a perfect fluid with a particular condition of state uh, is a bit of sound. So uh, you can solve this equation exactly, but just consider it not fluid. And you will see how the universe evolution behaves. The problem arises because so years ago. <coughs> And <coughs> analyzing it is supernova data, which was more than 10 years ago now. Analyzing supernova data, uh, people found that according to this equation, these dynamical equations of the universe evolution, the curve that uh, fits better this data is a curve where you have to add a uh, perfect fluid with a negative pressure. And uh, what well, that was really unexpected. Public and uh, after this, well, there have been uh, other proofs that uh, well, support this idea, this idea of the late time acceleration. Uh, in particular, uh, well, this is just uh, fit assuming a lambda CD model, but it's a greater application. But in any case, well, assuming a lambda CDM model, uh, and, as I say, taking into account not only supernovae that predict, but also PAO, value different oscillation, and the cosmic microwave background, what one finds is that this fluid with a negative pressure is, uh, is, uh, <coughs> is between 70 and 80 percent of the content of the universe. So, after that, After, after, well, people were really convinced about this, this fact. Uh, well, people start to, to explore how the dark energy evolution of the state may be. And in order to guarantee that we have a late time acceleration, the only requirement is that this equation of the state parameter must be, must be less than minus one over three. And, uh, Departing from that, we can more or less classify the different, the different dark energy models in kinder sense models. And there are those that are greater than minus one. Uh, minus one, that is a logical constant, or greater than minus one, that is a phantom fluid. So we can use this, this kind of thing. <coughs> the problem of all of this is that uh, in order to, to describe that, Use this behavior, this all this equation of space. We, you may do through a lot of options, options to you, and, it, and it's very difficult to differentiate between them. The most popular one, let's say, is probably the simplest one, the logical constant, which doesn't have a logical constant, so the instinct will be action, and then uh, you are on a half. Basically, a perfect fluid with an uh, equation of the state equal to minus one. Uh, also, other models that have been deeply studied are those where you consider, where you consider a scalar field that, uh, that in comparison with this, the monological models uh, are models with a non constant equation of the state, also vector fields. and I'm going to, let's say, to the geometrical sector of the, of the action, also uh, modifications of the, of the environment of the action itself, where you, instead of considering the 
reactions cut out in a linear term of the GSLR reaction, uh, you are going to have a more complicated function of the, of the carbon uh, And well, you can obviously make this as difficult as you want. And you can also add other terms as the trace of the energy molecule tensor so that you are going to have non standard couples between matter, matter and, and, and gravity. And uh, as I say, this well, is probably are the most popular ones. Are, there are much more models. Also, there are models uh, which uh, suggest that the universe is not completely homogeneous and isotropic, and so that we have a, uh, <coughs> a kind of back reaction that is not responsible. But uh, the most accepted ones are ones like, that think that the universe is dominated by a negative negative pressure. Uh, the question is that this thing which is these models is what we don't know. Uh, at least people are working hard with it, but perhaps as we don't have enough data, it's difficult to distinguish if one is better than another. So what some people This is just a phenomenological, phenomenological description. And what, what we were <coughs> what we were exploring is that in comparison with what we were using supernova data and DAO, uh, we found that actually in comparison with Lambda CDM, the fittings, comparing the Kaya square, the minimum Kaya square that you find fitting with the data on the reduced one. Adding in comparison with Lambda CDM uh, gives you a quite well fit. Uh, in the same way that the previous parameterization proposed by other people also give you a, a reduced chi square that's 
automatic the numbers here, the also being made very well. So, <clears throat> yeah. I will use Kaya Square, it's not better, but it's very close. Yeah, maybe you don't see it. Is it 78? That's why uh, I say that uh, mm. uh, in these parliamentary, parliamentary sessions, people were trying to pull out or at least to find which they behave is more likely. But well, the conclusion is that uh, you cannot see it. Because the Kali Square and the Reduce Kali Square are very similar in this way. Obviously, if you consider other models, probably they are gonna they are gonna have a worse behavior. But in, in, in particular, this and this, they, they have a very close, uh, very well fit version of that. So, if another way of modeling the universe evolution, something that has been explored well in the last, well, this is. Basically, cosmography <coughs> is another tool of uh, testing, uh, testing historical data in a model independent way. So that, as we say, we, uh, we don't know the underlying theory, we don't know how or what, we can say what large energy is, but we can try to test uh, how the universe evolution is, how this uh, close to the, to the present day. Um, basically, cosmography is just based on the cosmological principle of the structure and homogeneous. Um, and departing from that principle, and assuming that Freeman and Merrill was a the metric, what cosmography does is basically an expansion of the, of the common parameter in terms of their frequencies. And then, if you define uh, some Parameters instead of considering the, well, the coefficients of the Taylor expansion, but some parameters that are gonna contain some physical behavior, you are gonna be able, uh, in principle, or for people who are in the, uh, you are gonna be able to uh, well, say something about how the universe evolution is. At least, as I say, within uh, the convergence radius of the series. And, uh, and these parameters that are very well known, and actually the first one proposing this was Harrison in 1976. Very good. And what Wayne Merrill was also the first one is, is probably well, is going to be the most important one uh, because it is the one that is going to tell us in the universe. Out. And, and the second one is also very important. Why? Because they, the, the year is called. It's going to tell us if our model is not as near or is not as we are not seeing. So, taking into account this as these uh, parameters, the, the graphic parameters, to give the Taylor is much of the Hubble parameter, and what we are going to have is a our series in terms of the red thing itself. Taking this, you can compare with the with any update or survey or something that's obviously must be within the conversion rate. Uh, some other people, in order to avoid the problem of the convergence radius, were uh, suggesting variable yes. instead of expanding the whole parameter in terms of the resin, uh, expand the, the whole parameter in terms of an auxiliary variable that is going to be able to cover the world universe system so that we are not going to be forced to use just data from resin 0 to 1 but 
produce data from the world universe history. Uh, this was something proposed by Keitra. Um, so then, I'm taking these two expansions, uh, what well, you can just construct observable, something that you can compare with the data. Um, in particular, and what we're going to use in this, in this talk, uh, supernova data. So that if you construct the luminosity distance and, what, and then the distance modulus, you can have uh, observable mapping in terms of the topographic parameters. Then use the data and fix both of them and see uh, if this behaves well. Uh, and as, as I say, one of the most important parameters, apart from the acceleration parameter that is going to tell us if the linear acceleration is, is being accelerated, is the, is the near parameter. Because in the lambda CDM model, this parameter is always one. So, any deviation from J0 equal 1 is going to tell us that the model, the underlying theory, in spite of that we are not using a, a particular underlying theory, but just a phenomenological description of the universe situation, is going to tell us if the, if the universe, if the underlying theory is not the same or is not. <coughs> Some people were. Actually, because uh, what well, I will show later, but uh, the more parameters you have, the larger errors you get when fitting with the data. Yeah. Yeah. Well, actually, my next slide is because uh, some people, actually, some people from Bilbao. They were testing if this, if the cosmography expansion is a simple tool to model the universe evolution when you go farther than set in one. And obviously, what they, they found comparing what the exact lambda CDN model with the Taylor expansion of the lambda CDN model and just plotting the structure of both of them on the other parameters and also the, the distant modules that is the amplitude that they, they measure with the supernova data. Uh, well, they, they found out that well, these are different <coughs> different orders of the expansion, but what they found is that basically and something is that the out of the operating radius is obviously it's gonna Expansion and, and the underlying the theory uh, are gonna are gonna be different. Uh, they also prove with the CPL model the parameterization that I, I showed before, uh, and they also found almost the same. The same what we did is okay. <coughs> Than, than 
one. And what we were doing is, okay, let's, let's confirm both variables, both expansion and this is if they actually work well. And for that, we basically generate data. We were generating 100 simulations, so 100 set of supernova data. And then, uh, using the Carlo Marco chains, we were fitting the cosmography parameters. I have to say that, well, for generating this data, we were using just a potential data series model, and, and we were stopping at set one one. Yeah. Take a model, data series model, in this case. We take omega n, omega n is the only three parameter in one, also the whole parameter. For supernova data, you can marginalize the whole parameter today. So actually, this, this parameter is not free, but you can marginalize. Uh, well, you assume a particular omega n, that is the only free parameter that you are going to have, and you just generate data. I mean, yeah, I mean, you calculate the luminosity distance, you, you, you take, you just take a set of red seeds and with a actually this is one of the Here we are not using real data, but we are generating the data. Yeah. Well, after we have the data, we take we take the cosmographic expansion in terms of set. And what this is gonna be in terms of set, you are not Same for Y. And then we, using this data, we fit this parameter. Yeah. So it's, it's, a, it's just a test, uh, a coverage test. It's what people do. Well, just a test that the, the fitting are working. So basically, you you generate what well, you assume a particular uh, deviation of your data, so you have some errors in your data. No, what? Well, well, there are there are different ways of doing. It. You can have the, the error to omega n, or you can do it here. Or, well, actually, this this is not what you use, but what you use is the apparent magnitude. Yeah, you add some errors to this magnitude or to omega n with a particular deviation, and then you fit your the data that you have obtained, you use to fit the, the parameters. As you know, there uh, this, this is just a coverage test because you know the real values of your the value, the value model. I mean, initially, you know how Q0, J0, S0, and M0 are. So what one tried to test with this is if, after generating this data, we are able to record this. And, well, obviously, this has an error because you are adding a particular error. And in principle, and using Monte Carlo Markov chains, uh, as we were simulating 100, uh, 100 sets of data, you should, you should get the, 
a real value, the true value, you, you should get in the <coughs> one sigma region. This will be sixty-eight uh, percent of the time. So approximately obviously. Uh, in the two sigma region this will be ninety-five percent of the times the true value. So, uh, so what we were doing is okay. Let's consider this expansion in terms of the resting set and the other auxiliary variable y, you know, and and let's consider different different uh, number of parameters or different orders in the, in the expansion. And what we found is that uh, for the case when you are considering three parameters, so the acceleration parameter, the jerk, and the knot, uh, using the variable y, the auxiliary, auxiliary variable y, this gives you completely biased result. Why? Because as you see, the true value only uh, analyzing this 100 data, 100 simulated data, only Q not is within the one similar region 26, uh, 26 times of over 100 uh, and one and the other ones are, are even worse so what basically means is that this is gonna uh, this is this is giving really biased results uh, however if you consider the resting set what you get is that uh, what you get is what Expect that basically x tends uh, s not that is uh, a bit over overestimating the errors a bit. The other two parameters are, are well behaved because they, they are within the one sigma, two sigma, three sigma regions in the, the proper number of times. However, when you go to one order higher in the expansion, what you get is that basically the errors are overestimated. The parameters, sorry, the fittings are overestimating the errors. What basically means that your errors are so high that you cannot say anything. Uh, so, <clears throat> what this is telling us is first that we we don't know. Well, we know because we we know the, the real values of the of the topographic parameters behind. But we don't know exactly which order of the expansion is better for fitting the data. And what we know for sure is that the resting set is behaving much better than the auxiliary variable one. If do if we look at one realization and we just look at the animal plot, what, <coughs> what one finds as one table the previous slide says that the errors of, of the topography parameters while considering white are much larger than the errors of, of the resting set. So basically this means that the auxiliary variable y is not, is not very useful, useful to, to fit data with the, the topographic Yeah, yeah, it's fair. Well, at least, yeah. At least looking at the expansion, it should be better. But when you feed the, the data, it gives you much larger errors. <coughs> Sorry. of the data is as a well, uh, is, 
สัมพันธ์ดีครับสัมพันธ์ก็จุดจุดต้นเอาไว้สาวิ่งเอาเอาอีกส่วนหนึ่งที่เด็กจะ after you after you what documentary then what is You are doing in a random way. So, you are assuming a particular distribution, a posterior probability of this with a single one. Imagine that one. This is the posterior probability of Q1. Uh, and the, the underlying theory is, is telling you that Q0 is minus 1.5. So when you generate data, you are assuming this distribution. So basically, after 100 gener generation of, of data, your what is it, what is it, what? your your data should be well, as I say, 68 percent one sigma, well, 90, 95 two sigma, and so on. Next step was to well, let's ask ourselves uh, our next step was okay, uh, let's try to, to see if we assume in a particular underlying theory that is not lambda CN but we generate data again. Okay? We can out lambda CDN. And for that, we were actually just a very, very simple model. Let's call it with a dark energy equation of the state constant, that would be that we were assuming that was minus 1.3. So this gives us a term uh, greater than 1, we were assuming the lambda CDN, and one a particular uh, matter density. And, and after generating data, and taking into account the cosmographic expansion at different orders and in them what we found is that actually you can in spite of that this model is 
different patterns in health, the equation of the parameter is minus 1.3. Uh, you cannot say anything about, you cannot rule out that as a And uh, you can see this very clearly here. If you assume four parameters, and what is it they not? And this is the posterior probability that you obtain after fitting the data. Uh, you can see that, that actually with four parameters, the evidence that J0 is not one, there is some ed evidence because J0 is one here, so probably it is the, uh, the one sigma region, or, sorry, the two sigma region. So you can have at least some evidence, but if you go to five parameters, and it's a cure that you cannot see, but Departing from here, something like this. That's what you can have some imagination. It's only here, but the curve is very clear. If you go for five parameters, the curve gives you something like this, so it's a huge error. So it basically means that you cannot say that the naught is not one, <coughs> because one is within the one super region. One and a wide range of, uh, of, of values of, of the year parameter. Uh, so, in comparison with let's fit the model as T, so let's just take this model, not the cosmographic expansion, but just this fit omega n and W, what you find <coughs> in this case, the, the posterior probability for, for the year is that actually uh, the, <coughs> the value of a naught, this is what the best fit obviously is this one, and, and the most uh, what the one sigma two sigma regions tell us much clearer than with the graph expansion that A naught is not gonna be one. And actually if you then take the uh, if you then calculate the posterior probability for W, what you see is basically that uh, you obtain obviously the best fit that might and you see that the, the lambda series model to so W equal minus one is almost ruled out. So what this is telling us is that actually cosmography is not very useful to, to rule out models because the errors are much higher than, than much larger than, than when you use just the other the, the, the real model. This is, yeah. Yeah, yeah.